Chapter 4, Second Night After her first night, she seemed more prepared. She brought rope, a screwdriver, and a knife. Okay, maybe I should explain the screwdriver was for taking out the power on the animatronics, rope tying them up, knife, that explains itself. She came to work one hour early and waited till the last child left. She then tied them up and took out their batteries, then untied them and sat them down. Mally smiled at her work and went to her office and shut the doors. Weird. Why two doors? Mally thought. Okay, time to check on these bots. Mally checked the cameras to find that her robotic friends were missing. She looked out the window to see that all of them were outside the door. She was shaking in fear. She grabbed the knife and ran out of the office. She ran to Foxy. Tears were in her eyes. She was screaming, but not in fear, in pain, of seeing how she was going to die to her friends. She looked at Foxy. Instead of seeing Foxy, she saw James. She looked behind her and saw Chi, Alex, and Ron. She looked back at James to see he was about to kill her with his own hook. She dropped the knife. Do it, James, she said. She wanted to end this nightmare. She thought back to when they were ten, happy, talking, and hanging out like normal kids. She smiled at the memory and, pre and prepared herself for death. But it never came. Instead, she found herself tied up with her own rope. What? Where are you guys taking me? <sighs> Mally looked ahead to see a do the door. The door to the room. She wasn't ready. Or at least wasn't ready for what was about to happen. Chapter 5. Golden Freddy. Why, hello, Mally. Look at how much you've grown in ten years, the Golden Freddy said. I'm gold. Mally was still shaking. She couldn't stop. I see the lost bat has found her way home. How good. Mally was still shaking, but not in fear anymore. Shaking. You know, you're lucky. Most people wouldn't come back. Why did you... He asked in front of her. I, I need, needed the money, she lied. He slapped her, leaving three bloody call marks. The truth, he yelled at her. Tears flowing out of Mally's eyes. Why do you care, she sobbed. Tell me, he shouted, slapping her again. Gold, stop, she's had enough, Chica said, holding her hands to her mouth. He held his hand up to slap her again. Mally prepared for more pain. But it didn't come. Instead, Freddy held Gold's at wrist. They all gasped at the new rebellions. Freddy, what has gotten into you? Gold scolded. I don't know. It's like something inside of me is taking over. I'm just a spectator, he said in alarm. Oh no, it's happening to us too. The other animatronics called, picking up madly and running with her out of the room and into the kitchen. Ah, that was close, James said. I'm too close, Alex said. Guys? Madeley acts confused by the whole thing. Madeley! They cried and hugged. What happened? She asked. Well, we didn't believe you about the whole hide thing. Freddy came back and took off his head to reveal a man with a purple shirt. And then we blacked out to find ourselves spectating out of the animatronic suits. We were stuck trying to find a way out for ten years, she explained. But all we could do was spectate. So then we gave up. But then you came and gave us hope. We tried until you went into the room. When you came out at six and told me see you tonight, I knew we had to try harder. So finally, when James was about to kill you, it triggered something. And now we are in control. But not for long. Only tonight. But please don't come back. You could get hurt or die. Alex worried. Look. I'm not going anywhere until you guys are at peace or alive, Mally argued. And how do you know it's just tonight? Is there a rule or something? Look, you need to get out of here now. Gold knows you're back. He won't stop. You need to... Ron was stopped by a bang. In came Gold, furious as ever. Come here, Madeline, and maybe your death will be less painful. I'll accept in his way. But Gold wasn't going to stop for anything. He pushed Alex to the ground and everyone else. 
and held madly up to the wall and screamed a deafening scream. They tried to pull him off, but they couldn't get his grip was too strong for them. Madly's ears were bleeding as Gold was still screaming, and she was out. Is she dead? They asked. She checked for a pulse. Nothing. Chapter 6 Death and Life Madly woke up, the same way her friends did. Out in control. It was late, and she checked in the mirror. I thought it wasn't her. It was some black and white striped puppet with a mask with stained tears. She rised like her friend. She too was now the puppet of Gold's game. A game he called Life and Death. His lost spot was found. Alright everybody. That is the end of the lost part. Yay. Now, if you guys want more of my books and whatnot, then please like, favorite, and subscribe and show your friends this video. Comment down below what was your favorite part. And maybe your comment will be shown in the next episode. I will see you guys later. Bye.